I've got a little bit of a difference for you this week. Instead of being out in the countryside, I'm actually in Oxford, and behind me is the Radcliffe Science Library. So I'm in the little, uh, in the sort of sciencey part of Oxford. What you can't see, which I'm looking straight at, is the Natural History Museum. Uh, and oop, over the other shoulder, over that shoulder, I got myself the right way around this week. You can see the bicycle propped in the background. So let's get straight on now. As you can see, this week's topic is universal plug and play, UPMP, what should you tell your friends and family? And the reason I wanted to discuss that today is that the most popular article on naked security this week was about yet another UPNP bug in home routers that's causing quite a lot of concern for people. But before I do that, I'd love to just touch on one little thing that is the second and third biggest stories that people are searching for, not new stories, information that people are searching for on Naked Security this week, which really they shouldn't be because it's kind of old news, but I want to remind you about this so you can advise the people near you and your friends and your family not to get involved in that, and that is Facebook hoaxes. They come in circles, they come and go, they're background radiation, and every now and then one or two or three often very old ones just suddenly surge up and everyone's falling for them again. So let's just go through the big four hoaxes that you'll probably see in here and that your friends may tell you about. Please tell them not to share this stuff. It's just a waste of bandwidth at best and it gets people into bad cybersecurity habits at worst. Uh, there's one going around at the moment. It's about that the, the, you've probably heard of this one. It's protect your content. Unless you post this particular thing, which is basically make a copy of my message and post it again to all your buddies that says, I disown Facebook's right to claim my copyright. If you don't do that, and it's always by tomorrow, then Facebook will take copyright over everything you own. That's not true. It's not part of the agreement. It's not part of the terms and conditions. Facebook can't change it unilaterally, and it's not happening tomorrow. Don't spread that hoax. And another related one that has been very big in the last week, there's this idea that actually, when you post stuff to Facebook, the reason you're not getting the reach you want, because you know there are a lot of things that people have got opinions about these days, uh, Facebook only share it with 25 of your friends but if you take ironically again this very message that says hey Facebook I I don't like the idea that you're only sharing this with 25 friends and you send that to everybody then somehow that will magically change the algorithm for you and your post will reach a wider range of people all that will happen if you do that is your annoying post of a hoax that's been going around for years will reach your 25 friends and everybody else and it'll make you look a little bit of an ill-informed fool at best. At worst, you'll be persuading somebody else to perpetuate this hoax. And of course, every now and then they simmer in the background, they reach a kind of critical level, and then they just go crazy again. These things have been going around for years, folks. They really shouldn't be a problem these days, and they are. So if anybody forwards you one of those hoaxes, don't ignore it. Maybe try and counsel them privately and just say, look, it seems harmless, you're just sending something, it seems pretty dumb, maybe no one will care. The problem is we've got enough to deal with at the moment with fake news, with stuff we don't want to hear, without hearing stuff that claims to be all this fancy legalese that's just a pack of nonsense. So Facebook hoaxes, don't forward them, don't let your friends do it and advise them, by the way, think before you click. So let's get on to the main topic today. I'll try and, try and be a little briefer than I have been in, in recent Facebook Lives. Got a little bit carried away, particularly for their questions. Hope you don't mind. But let's get straight on to this issue of UPNP, Universal Plug and Play. So what is it? Basically, if you think back to the old days when you'd go and you buy a printer or a scanner or a webcam or something like that, and it came with a USB cable and you plug it in, in the very, very early days, you'd then have to go and find drivers and download software, and it was all a huge palaver to get the device working. Plug and play was the idea that, hey, the device can send some data down the cable to your computer, which will help it identify the device, it'll pick the right driver, it'll load the software, and it'll all work. So it's plug and play. You plug it in and it kind of works without you having to go through a science project. Well, that's all very well when you've got a device that you've plugged one-to-one -one on a cable into your computer. What, however, if you've got a device that you bring home, you connect it to your network, whether it's by plugging it in via a cable on your router, like if it's a high bandwidth device like video capture, media server, something like that, or just a wireless device, you hook it up to your network. Now, how on earth do all your other devices know it's there? How does your router know it's there? When your friends come around and they get on the Wi-Fi, how do they know where your printer is, where your scanner is, where the webcam is, where whatever it is? And the 
idea is that the industry took this idea of plug and play with a cable to universal plug and play, which was actually a technology that could advertise where devices that you brought onto your network could say to the rest of your network, hey guys, I'm a printer, I'm a scanner, I'm a media server, I'm a games console, whatever it is, and something on your network, typically your router could go, hey, I like the idea of that, let me find out more about you, let me help people discover you, let me help the users configure you, and by the way, I'm the router, I'm the gateway to the internet, I can help you configure yourself to get on the internet properly. Now, described like that, you're probably thinking, what could po po possibly go right? And in fact, UPnP, Universal Plug and Play, has been dogged over the last 10 years or so since it came out with security bugs, with misconfiguration problems, and with the fact that because it's allowed that any device can advertise itself to your router or to any other device, because it's a huge and complicated way that a network can auto-configure itself, it's actually surprisingly complicated to implement all its parts, particularly when you're trying to squeeze it into a little device like a webcam, uh, or a, or a TV server or a home router, all of which are generally built down to a price, so there's not a lot of money left over for security. So this week, the big story was a thing called, I'm um, just looking at my notes, but this one's got a fancy name, it's called Call Stranger. And the idea is it was a Turkish researcher, I believe, who discovered a whole load of flaws in a, a lot of implementations, most popular implementations of UPnP, whether that's in the operating system, so Windows, uh, Windows 10 just patched this, I believe, in the, in the last Patch Tuesday update, but an awful lot of routers, possibly billions of routers around the world, could be influenced by this because most UPnP implementations, the software that's baked into routers, had a bug in that allowed a, a whole series of flaws to exist. So let me explain typically what can go wrong with UPnP. Well, there are a couple of main things. The first one is that devices that advertise themselves to the world via universal plug and play are saying, hey, anyone who wants to administer me, come and ask me, here's a URL, visit me, I will tell you information about myself. And it turns out that basically by sending a device a tiny little packet across the network saying, okay, I'm kind of interested the device may send a, what amounts to a giant essay about everything it can do, what configuration options it's got, what vendor it was, and so forth. So you can send a tiny little network packet and then provoke a response. And uh, one of the bugs that this Turkish fellow found is that you could provoke a response that actually went to somebody else outside, as far as I understand. So you could send a tiny little request to a device and it would bombard somebody else with a giant sea of traffic. Now that's what's known as an amplification attack for obvious reasons, and it's used typically for denial of service or distributed denial of service. So what happens is somebody secretly tells one of your devices, hey, my name is so-and-so, person I don't like, and I would like to know all about you. And you say that to thousands of devices around the world, and they all pile in and they all send traffic to this poor innocent person who then gets bombarded with a denial of service attack, a huge amount of network traffic they didn't ask for. Now, the other problem with universal plug and play is it provides a mechanism where a device inside your network, now presumably you trust it because you've bought it, you've configured it, you've installed it, you've set it up, but once it's there, once it's identified itself to the world with this universal plug and play system, what it can do is say to your router, hey, by the way, I'd like to be on the internet and I'd like the configuration of the router to be adjusted in security terms as follows. Now, there's no authentication in this, and generally speaking, that what, that what that means is if malware can get inside your network, then it doesn't need to crack into your router necessarily. It may be able to send dodgy UPnP packets that actually cause the router to open things up for that malware in a way that you would never do if you were configuring the router yourself. So the idea of universal plug and play, it's meant to make it really easy to discover devices, for devices to find each other, and for your router to manage stuff on your network without you having to mess around with IP numbers yourself, without you having to download special software, without you having to learn how to go to a different web interface for every different device. So it's a great idea, but as you probably know, when convenience meets cybersecurity, then generally convenience wins and cybersecurity goes down because a device inside your network that can either by accident or design configure your router to open up a hole so people can connect in from the outside is basically 
could basically undo all the precautions that you have with your router acting as a firewall that prevents incoming connections. So turning off universal plug and play does not render you immune to malware. It doesn't stop data being sent out from your network by some malicious software, but it does make it much harder for bugs. And there have been sadly very many over the years in very many different sorts of router. It stops bugs in this universal plug and play, zero configuration, automatic setup utility from being misused by devices inside or outside your network in order to cause your security to reduce. Now, what I want to leave you with is how you turn it off. And I wish there was a way I could say, well, this is what you do. You open this web interface on your router, you press this button, and there's an option that you cross out, and that stops universal plug and play. The problem is that every router does it slightly differently. So what you need to do is log into your router's management interface. And by the way, while you're about it, check that that interface is not visible to the outside unless you expressly want it to be. You basically don't want people trying to log in from outside to reconfigure your router because that's the worst thing that could possibly happen because it means the crooks outside could get a foothold inside your network without you even realizing it. So you'll need to log into your, your, your router's management interface and you'll need to go through the options. You may need to dig around through them and everyone is going to be a little bit different. But somewhere you should see an option that says universal plug and play or just UPNP. The N is, little, is written as a little letter. And in there, almost certainly, there will be an option that lets you just turn it off. Now, many routers these days ship with it off by default, which is good because of all the risks associated with it. But you may find if you've got an old router, or if it was set up by somebody else, or if something has reconfigured it without you realizing it, it may be turned on. I strongly recommend that you turn UPnP off because it stops auto configuration mismanagement disasters on your routers, and it stops bugs like the one we wrote about on Naked Security being exposed inside and outside your network. Because basically, if it ain't there, if it ain't active, if it ain't visible, then the crooks can't abuse it. Uh, having said that, uh, there may be some devices on your network that you find do require universal plug and play. Um, for example, I remember hearing uh, a couple of years ago, oh, if you've got some Chromecast device from Google, it absolutely requires it. But we have many people on Naked Security saying, no, I've got one. I've got UPnP off. It works absolutely fine inside my network. That's all I need. So basically, the bottom line is, turn it off, and if everything still works, you're golden, and you have reduced, you've cut out one giant part of your attack surface area. So Mark Morley says, oh, thanks, just disabled it. So it sounds, Mark, it sounds like for you, it was turned on, and it may have been turned on because either because it was on by default in the router, or sometimes you'll buy a new device, and it says, hey, step one, turn on UPnP in your router. And the reason vendors of devices do that is it's not necessarily that it's required, it's just that it kind of makes things much easier. In just the same way that a few years ago, even mainstream computer software, you still get some that does it. It says, hey, when you install us, some antivirus programs have a freak out about it. So turn your antivirus off and install this program and then turn your antivirus back on. So the very moment you're installing something brand new, you're reducing your security, very bad idea. Exactly the same with universal plug and play. If you can live with Without it, please do so because it's a feature you don't need, and historically it has been rather littered with bugs. Uh, Masayoshi, nice and simple explanation, nice work, Duck. Um, thank you, Masayoshi, I greatly appreciate it. Hope you're keeping well and uh, staying out of coronavirus trouble. Um, to everybody who's watched or who watched later, if you've got any more questions, if you've got questions about specific advices, please leave them uh, in the comments below. It doesn't matter if you're watching after the event, we'll still go back and answer the questions later. So the bottom line, folks, two things from today's broadcast. One is, please don't spread Facebook hoaxes, and please, friends don't let friends spread those hoaxes either. They kind of don't do much harm, but they're just a complication that we absolutely do not need. And secondly, UPnP, it's a fantastic feature that's designed to make configuration easier, but has the unfortunate side effect that it often makes security worse. If you can live without it, please do so. Ray, I'm loving the explanation. Thank you, Ray. I'm glad you find it useful. Uh, sometimes the problem with stuff like UPnP is it, it's sort of littered with jargon. There are things like SSDP, simple, simple something, div, simple, 
service discovery protocol, there's SOAP, and oh, there are all these acronyms that just make it sound so complicated. And if it's hard to understand by reading the specifications and all that jargon, you can imagine for software writers who are trying to write this complicated code to process all of this stuff, cram it into a tiny little webcam, you can imagine with the best word in the world why security mistakes happen. Ray Bird, thank you. Even I understood this. Well, don't do yourself down. Um, is it Ray? Have I read correctly? Yes, I have. There's a, little, there's a spot of dust on the screen. that I wasn't sure whether it was Ray or Ro. So Ray, the, the point is, things, technological things, they're not supposed to be hard to understand. The problem is that frequently they're shrouded in this magic jargon that when you read it, it makes perfect sense if you already understood it. So there you have it, folks. Thanks very much for listening. And until next time, stay secure. And I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the science library background.